everybody welcome back to my channel so in this video I'm going to be doing another hair tutorial but this time it's not going to be realistic hair that I'm showing you it's going to be my more stylized hair that you've seen me do in many of my sketch with me videos and I've had a lot of you guys requesting it so I thought I'd show you the process of sketching inking and coloring it today and I'm also thinking next week of doing a video where I do lots of hairstyles like 10 15 or maybe even 20 hairstyles to really show you my processes in depth so please comment below Below, what type of hairstyles would you like me to draw next week so anyway let's get into this tutorial so I started off by creating two oval shapes to represent the shapes of the head and just below the top of the head I did a curved line that was parallel to the top of the head just to represent the hairline you don't want to do the hairline straight across make sure that it curves with the shape of the head otherwise it's not going to look natural if you just do it straight across and that's the mistake that I see a lot of beginners make is they just do their hairline really straight across Cross rather than just like curving it with the curve of the head. So the first thing that I do when I'm working on the hair is I start with the hair just around the hairline. I really like to get in the direction of the hair away from that hairline straight away so I know the direction that that hair is going in. And then once I've done that, I'm building this up in terms of sections. I'm not just doing lots of pencil strokes for the hair. I like to do it in terms of clumps and the locks of hair. You can use a reference photo if you want or you can do it from your imagination. When I'm doing this more stylized hair, I really like to just do it from my imagination and be really creative with it and just try things out and just have fun with it. With this type of hair, you don't really need a reference. Obviously, you can start with references until you get more confident with it, but I really just like to have fun with it and just be creative because it's not meant to be realistic hair, so you have more freedom with it. And I just like to focus on the way the hair flows. As you can see, my lines are really curved and really fluid. You don't have to be super rigid with your lines and make the hair really uniformed. Just really relax with it and let your lines be nice and fluid and curved. And even if it's curly hair, make sure that your angles are really soft as they change. Don't have too many harsh, jagged angles. And especially when the hair is changing direction, don't do it too sort of harshly. Just really let it flow. So what I just did was I erased the guideline for the head because once you've got the basis of the hair in, you don't need that oval shape for the top of the head anymore. And as you can see, when I'm doing the hair, I did go a little bit above that headline on the top of the oval. So my hair went above the top of the head. And this is really important. When you're drawing your face, you'll want to have your hair going just a bit above that oval that you drew for the head shape because the hair doesn't just sit really flat against the head. It has volume and to make it look really natural, you want it to go a bit above the head and a bit away from the sort of face. You can even have the hair falling onto her face or his face a bit and just really make it natural looking. And to do this, just have a few flyaway bits of hair. Don't have it all super uniform together. Have a few bits of hair flowing in different directions. And that's another thing you wanna focus on is what direction do you want your hair to be going in? Is there wind blowing on the hair that's making it go a different way or a certain way? And really think about where the hair is falling. If it's falling onto the person's shoulders or if it's like falling over things think about that how that would affect the direction of the hair so as you can see i'm just building up the different sections of hair and i'm just adding on to the sides to the bottom to really make sure that it's nice and full i've got the majority of it blocked in i know what length my hair is and now i'm just adding little bits of hair just around the sides like i said add those flyaway bits of hair to break it up and as you can see, I am erasing quite a bit. And so if you do a piece of hair that you don't like, then just erase it. That's why I think it's so important just to try and do the sections of hair in like one fluid motion without being really slow about it and trying to be really controlled. Loosen up your hand on the grip of the pencil. And if you do it wrong and you don't like that bit of hair, just erase it and do it again. So now that I've blocked in the hair, let's go in and ink it. And so to do this, you'll want to have made sure that you did your sketch quite light. Don't press super hard on the pencil because we're gonna be erasing the pencil sketch once we've inked it in. So my main tips when inking in the hair is to make sure you're doing each sort of strand of hair, each line in one go, in one fluid motion, and then it will look really crisp, really clean, and really nice. If you just stop and start, then you're gonna be able to tell where you've stopped and started and it won't look soft and like one smooth line. 
Also, don't worry if it doesn't completely fit onto your sketch. If it's a little bit off from your sketch, that's fine. The sketch is basically like a guideline. So don't worry if it's a little bit off from where the sketch was because we're gonna be erasing that anyway. That sketch just gives you an idea of where to ink, but don't feel like you have to make sure that it goes completely on that pencil sketch really accurately because at the end of the day, it's more important to keep your lines fluid than to worry and be really slow just so that it perfectly fits onto the sketch line. So as you can see, I'm just going around the main sections of hair. I've done quite a lot of lines, but I'm inking in the main shapes. And I'm also going to create some little detail between each clump of hair just to show the direction a bit and just to add a bit of detail. So really make sure that you're also using the nib of the pen full on. Don't try and use the side because if you use the side of the pen, then it's quite often going to break up between that line. It won't be one solid line. It will break up in parts. So make sure you're using it fully down on the paper. Once I've inked in everywhere, I go in with a slightly thicker nibbed pen and I use this to pull out those outlines of the main clumps of hair. So I've got lots of details within each section, but this thicker nib is just to go over those main outlines for the larger clumps of hair. And doing this gives your hair variety in the thickness of the hair and it adds a bit more depth. So now that we've inked it all in, I'm gonna go in with that eraser and just use that to rub away all of that sketch. And make sure the ink is all completely dry before you do this because you don't wanna smudge your ink. So give it a few minutes just to make sure it's completely dry. I just wanna mention that I did the sketch with a just normal HB pencil and I'm actually just using printer paper for this. So I'm using really cheap supplies, nothing special, and I just used a fine liner for it as well. So there's no reason that you guys can't do something just like this, you don't need any fancy supplies. So now I'm going in with a marker pen and this is just like a nice light pink colour and I'm just colouring in the whole of the hair. So all of the sections, I'm just colouring it in, block colouring everywhere in. If you want, you could do it where you leave the section of hair in the middle quite light for the highlights and then just kind of shade using this pen, not fill it in or just leave it slightly lighter in the middle of the section to add like that highlight and shine to the middle of the section of hair and then just use it on either end and kind of taper it off towards the middle. But I like to just block in the whole of the hair and then use a white pencil to pull up the highlights and add a darker pink or a black to pull up the shadows as well and get those shadows in. So I'm just using a white colored pencil. You can use a white colored pencil or white charcoal pencil or a white gel pen, white pastel, anything that you want. And I'm just using this and I'm going in the middle of each section of hair, so towards the middle, and I'm just using this to add a bit of shine. You want to give your hair contrast and depth and the way to do this is to add highlights and shadows. So I'm not doing any particular detail, I'm just literally shading in those middle bits and just adding it over the top. And now I'm going in with a black colour pencil and I'm just going to use this to darken up some of those places in the hair that would be more shadowed. So like the areas by her neck, there'd be a lot more shadow there, it's not as exposed to the light. And I'm just adding this mainly at either side of each section of hair. Like I said, leave the middle of the section of hair highlighted and then the ends are normally quite shadowed as well. So I'm just shading this in, I'm using lines to do this, I'm not using circular motions or just shading back and forth, I'm doing it in lines that are going with the direction that that hair is going in. A very similar technique to what I do with realistic hair as well. And these sorts of techniques do apply to realistic hair, like the basic concepts. Like with realistic hair, you've still got to think about the anatomy, the way the hair flows, the shadows and highlights. So this can still apply to realistic hair. And like my tips for realistic hair can still apply to the stylized hair. So if you do want more tutorials, then try watching my realistic hair tutorials because even if you might not want to do realistic hair, they can still probably help you with your stylized hair and you can use those tips and those techniques and apply it to your style. So let's go through the second hairstyle now. Now that I've gone through some more general tips, I'll talk through more how I'm doing this hairstyle. And so again, we started off with the hairline just a bit below the top of the head, that curved line where we're doing our hair 
line from. And so the hairstyle for this, I wanted to do a very nice plait going over her shoulder and also a little bit of a bun on top. So it's more of an updo and a plait. And so again, I started off creating a general hair outline. So you can see just above the top of the head is where I'm starting it. I said leave a bit of space just above the top of the head so it doesn't look like the hair is literally stuck to the top of the head. It's got to have a bit of volume to it and make it look a bit more natural. And when I'm doing the actual plait shapes, this is something that you need to look at a reference for probably or I've got another tutorial on how to draw plaits and the shapes but just look at reference photos to get the general idea of what a plait shape looks like and the structure of a plait but there are similarities between these two hairstyles that I'm doing even though they're completely different hairstyles the process that I'm doing to create them is very similar and I think this will be more noticeable when I do the video next week where I go through like 15 hairstyles you'll probably be able to see the things that I'm doing similar no matter what the hairstyle is you can see that I'm just using those lines those curved lines creating those sections in a very similar way to build up the shapes even if it is a completely different hairstyle no matter the hairstyle I'll still approach it in the same sort of way and build up the hair in the same way like I said once you've got in the majority of the hair you can erase that sketch for the head you know that oval shape you can erase that bit so you can't see that and you can also erase that guideline that we created for the hairline as well because you don't want to see that curved line for where the hair is but anyway that will be erased when we ink it in anyway so if you don't want to erase that then you can leave it because we'll have to erase that anyway but just make sure you don't ink in that line so the next thing I'm doing is I'm just erasing and changing stuff and erasing again because I want to get that bun right you don't have to get it perfect the first time you might need to erase it a few times until you're happy with it and that's completely fine I don't do it right every time first time and I think it's important to show you guys that even the people you might think are really good at doing something it's still fine to make mistakes and I still make mistakes and no matter how sort of experienced you are with it, it doesn't mean you're never going to make a mistake. So don't worry if it takes you a long time to do one hairstyle. Don't worry if you have to keep erasing certain bits until you get it right. The the main thing is that in the end you get to somewhere where you're really happy with your drawing. You just want to be really satisfied. It doesn't matter how long it takes you to get there, how many mistakes you make because you'll be learning from those mistakes and the more you do it the less sort of mistakes you'll make. It's going to be pretty much expected that on your first hairstyle that you're going to attempt, you're probably not going to be able to pick up that pencil and do it perfectly the first time. You're probably going to make mistakes and erase bits, but the most important thing is that you are determined and persevere with it because you will get something that you like in the end if you just keep working through those mistakes and if you find something and you're not happy with it then do erase it and do try and change it don't just leave it because you're scared that if you change it it might look worse it's all about trial and improvement experimenting and fixing your mistakes and learning and noticing what doesn't look right so let's get into the inking process again very similar to the last one those fluid lines are key, really important and I'm going in with the smaller nib first and then obviously you can go in with the thicker nib and build up more variety and depth by adding some thicker lines. So you can see on the left hand side of her face I added some really small thin pieces of hair to help frame it because a lot of the hair is going to be in the bun or incorporated into the plait so there's not going to be a lot of free hair falling down that's long so I just did these really small pieces around her face and going onto her face to help frame it and just to make it look a lot more natural and just to make it look really elegant. And now I'm going in with that thicker nib and I'm going to thicken up some of these lines. I'm just showing you it a bit slowly so you can see how I do it in one fluid motion and you can see I just control it, take my time but I make sure that I'm doing it in one fluid motion and that's important. You don't have to go super fast because you're doing it in one motion. You can go sort of slow, not too slow but slow enough where it's controlled and you can really focus on what you're doing without it being too sort of rigid. And so I just add that to the main sections of the hair, mainly the outline and some of those thicker clumps. But as you can see, I've got those thinner pieces of hair in between the sections to really show the direction. And so these little lines, these thin lines helps give it direction. And so now I'm going in with a blue marker this time, just a light blue. And I'm just using this to fill in the whole of the hair again. 
when you get to near the hairline when you're doing the marker on the hairline try not to do it in a solid sort of area on the hairline don't just try and do it solidly around that hairline try to taper it off in certain places so it doesn't look like one really harsh outline try to taper it up into the hair so just cover that onto the whole of the hair and before you add the highlights and the shadows make sure you give it time to completely dry especially if you saturate the paper with the markers and especially if you are using a type of paper that becomes very full with the marker and it takes a while to dry so make sure you completely let it dry otherwise when you go on with the pencils there's a risk that you'll damage the paper and you don't want to do that so I've let that dry and I'm going in with a dark blue and again I'm just adding the shadow you can add the highlights first or you can add the shadows first it's completely up to you as you can see I added the highlights first on the first hairstyle but now this one I'm going to use the shadows first and do them first so just go in with that pencil and just use that just to add some depth add the shadows around the outside edges of the hair and leave the middle just without any of this dark shadowed pencil because that's where we're going to add the highlights you can experiment with this with the different colours, you might even want to add a different colour into it for the shadows. And another thing is you don't have to do the hair one colour, you could do some really cool different colours on there or you could do sort of gradients from one colour down to another one at the bottom by mixing two markers and so there's a lot of different things you could do with this hair. So finally I'm just going in with that white colour pencil to add all of the highlights in the hair but that's basically it for this video. Remember next week I'm doing lots more hairstyles so please comment below what hairstyles would you like to see and what colours and also if you guys are interested in more real time tutorials of realistic people, animals using lots of different mediums then I do have real time tutorials on Patreon but thank you guys so much for watching if you're new around here and you liked this then make sure to subscribe and here's a playlist of lots of hair tutorials so you can watch even more but that's it from me and i'll see you next time bye everybody